Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I welcome you to today's parliamentary debate between St. Michael's Model Conference Secondary School on the Propositions Team on All Hallows seminary, Minor Seminary on HR on side opposition. From side proposition, we have Obuj Samuel as the Ali speaker, Mwaj Agudani as the first party speaker, and Afba Emmanuel as the second party speaker. And from side opposition, we have Usof Chombosko as the Ali speaker, Ezra Chubu Emmanuel as the first party speaker, and Ume Anthony as the second party speaker. The House, the motion on ground stays. This house prefers a world where extreme rich people donate to their government rather than non-governmental organizations to achieve gender equality. I now call upon the thank you power to highlight the house and the rules guiding today's debate with the use of time. Good afternoon, the Honorable House. My name is Jason Muir, and I'm a prestigious seminarian of all the seminary on each year, and I am the thank you of today's debate. Raised by my mod uh, moderator, I'm going to give the modalities of today's debates. First of all, each speaker has exactly eight minutes for his speech. At the first minute, I clap my hand once to signify that time for POI has started. That is, the first argument cannot ask that speaker at that particular moment questions. At the seventh minute, I clap my hand twice to signify that the time for POI has elapsed. That is also that the opportunity given to the first argument to ask questions to that speaker at that particular moment has elapsed. Lastly, at the eight minutes, precisely, I clap my hand continuously <laughs> to signify the time for the speaker has elapsed, and that demands that the speaker has to go and sit down. Take notes. Today's debate, the speakers, anything you hear from the speakers in today's debate is not based on the view of the speakers but what the, speech, what the motion demands. Let's not forget, the reply speech will be for four minutes. Aya Iata est, the die is cast as we wait for the clash of the titans. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the battle line has now been drawn between the same proposition and the same opposition. With this, I call upon the lead speaker from team proposition to come and establish the case of proposition. So the House, the motion on floor today clearly states that this house prefers a world where extremely rich people donate to their government rather than NGOs to achieve gender equality. And as the least speaker from side proposition in, in doing justice to this motion, I'll be giving the House four major substantive arguments. First, I'll be characterizing and defining the three key major actors we see in today's argument. Second, I'll be bringing up the, uh, uh, second, I'll be bringing up the argument of dynamics of gender inequality. I'm telling you the best ways we can solve the problem of gender inequality. Third, I'll be, bringing, I'll be running a comparative analysis between our world and the world of side opposition when it comes to world of side opposition when it comes to actually solving the problem of gender inequality. On my third substantive, I'll be actually run on my third substantive, I'll be bringing an argument of accountability. We'll be comparing both worlds, which world is more accountable. We're going to be seeing my first supporting speaker bring up the argument of concept of optimal maximization of the nations. Second, he's going to bring up the argue, he's going to bring up the argument of longevity, long, where he's going to compare both worlds and tell you which world will last longer. On the second argument, he's going to bring up the argument, on the second argument, he's going to bring up the Argument that act on the second argument, he's going to bring up an argument that actually shows why a world reduce, reduces tax burdens, tax burdens for citizens. My second supporting speaker is going to evaluate today's debate by using comparative and impact and analysis to prove to you why to prove to you why Tim St. Michael's stands in favor of today's motion. So, panel, what side provisions definition of a government? A government is actually a group of people who have the responsibility of guiding or protecting an area. Now, it could be a country, a state, or local government. Bringing it down to our country, Nigeria, we have three major tiers. That's the federal, the state, and the local government. Now, this 
different tiers of government actually have different ministries that combine and work with the Ministry of Women's Affairs to see to the fact that rights of individuals are being rights of females are being protected in every sector. So part of what who are actually the NGOs, the non-governmental organizations that are, that are formed by individuals or corporations that have different aims and objectives. So part of, I'll be showing two major natures of NGOs that side opposition will definitely not be seen in today's argument. And that's first, NGOs are religiously and ethnically affiliated in nature. This is due to the fact that actually owned by and this is due to the fact that actually owned by NGOs. This means two things. That we actually see NGOs in our society today that focus on a particular region or religion or ethnic group. Just so we have the JDC that focuses on only Catholic. Se Catholics. Second, the actions of NGOs actually depend on the mindset of an individual or the individual that actually owns these NGOs and not what is going on on ground. From the both characterization, you can see that government is a government for all, while NGOs is, a, is, is an organization that focus on the ideologies of an individual. So, Paul, who are the third major key actors in today's argument? And that's the extremely rich people. They are characterized as being billionaires and having worth net worth of more than a billion dollars. That means these people's donations comes out in different billions of dollars and multi-millions, either in terms of cash or in terms of kind. So, Paul, on my first line of argument, I'll be showing the house, I'll be bringing up the point of dynamics of gender inequality. So, the house, let's get something straight clear. When it comes to when it comes to fighting the problem of gender inequality, it goes far beyond these factors we're seeing, like sending hundred girls to schools, sharing necessary materials for females, what we'll talk about, sanitary pads, thought, erecting structures. But no, it actually involves policies, implementing policies, enforcing policies, and bringing out sections that punishes offenders of these policies. But no, we feel that these are the major things that we should consider that actually protect the override, overall rights of individuals. Already we see the government actually working through this, right? So for, now, for example, now, we see policies that cease to the fact that covers gender gaps in education. We found of the government building different schools of 104 unity schools that its education are, what, 100% free. So that school is actually run by the government and even down to its teachers, it's been, down, to its te down to its teachers are being paid by the government. Second, we see policies that actually cover gender gaps income gender gaps in equal income distribution this is like we talk about the public sector what females get paid according to their level and according to their profession but we feel these are the major things that should be considered when it comes to fighting gender inequality when it comes to fighting gender inequality and not other silly minor factors like sending these girls to schools erecting structures and the rest of them so on my second line of argument i'll be showing you i'll become doing i'll be running a comparative comparative analysis which will show to you why the government is in a better posi position to solve this and hence why these donations to actually go to the government rather than the NGOs if we talk about solving the problem of gender inequality. So Paul, in the government you have three major arms, right? That's the executive, the that's the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. These people are actually charged with the responsibility of implementing laws, enforcing laws, and actually punishing and actually bringing sections that punish offenders against these laws. So Paul, there's something we should understand in today's debate. Enforcing these laws actually costs a lot of money. Just, just like the policy that we'll see to, that we brought about 35% of affirmative action for women is estimated of, of, of uh, about 6.8 billion naira. So Paul, so Paul, this, the nature of the government has actually placed it in this position to actually enforce, implement these policies which we feel are the major things we should talk about in today's argument. So Paul, policies are ready to be working. Policies that cover gender gaps in education, policies that see to equal income distribution. But partner, we're saying that the government needs more funds to actually continue enforcing these policies. So partner, let's compare this with the NGOs, the powers of the NGOs. Partner, it's actually saying that NGOs have persuasive power, not authoritative power. But you can see from the government that the government has authoritative power in the sense that it has the power to punish these offenders that goes against the policies of these most rights, which we believe are the main criteria we should talk about in today's argument. So NGOs actually have persuasive power. But we draw a question that if this persuasive power falls to work in our society today, then what happens to the policies of these ladies? But already we see the government that uses persuasive power and authoritative power to see to the fact that the policies of these ladies are being listened to and just, justified. So on my fourth line of argument, let's accept this fact. The side opposition may come up with this argument that the government is very corrupt that the government is very corrupt and may try to paint the NGOs as saints and not as villains. But for now, I will show you, so for now, under, this, under the argument of accountability, I will show you why our world is even more accountable. But first, in the year 2018, we saw about five NGOs that suddenly closed down after re receiving donations and grants. First, for now, this is to show you that these NGOs, the long, their longevity is not, doesn't last. Second, for now, this is to show you that these NGOs are not even in any way accountable. Mind you, they are not democratically elected. Second, for now, they are not bound by the law to actually account for 200 million citizens in Nigeria. But for now, first, on the argument of accountability, I'll be bringing you the level, 
my first level of analysis is that democracy presumes accountability. And he says that every single democratic government must actually account for how its money was being spent. And Pono, earlier, I actually characterized this as rich people that donations come in billions and multi millions. So, Pono, we feel this should be a major criteria we should think about when it comes to solving the problem of gender equality. But Pono, we're talking about implementing policies, covering gender gaps in equal income distribution, covering gender gaps in actually education. So, Pono, we actually believe that we should focus on a world that is less corrupt. Based on democracy, every government must account for how its money was being spent down to the last five naira. So, Pono, on my second level of, uh, uh, level of analysis, which is the checks and balances which is the checks and balances that exist in the government. So, Paulo, already we know in the government, right, when we talk about the National House of Assembly, Paulo, when we talk about the National House of Assembly, this National House of Assembly, at the end of each year, the government actually submits its budget on how its money was being spent, on how its money was being proved. So, Paulo, we're sure of one thing. We're sure that the money we're actually donating, the funds we're actually donating for these girls, there's a 100% possibility chance, there's a 100% chance that this money will actually be used for what it's meant to be used for. So, Paulo, when we talk about the NGOs, we don't see democracy as forcing these people to account. So, Pono, we don't see these checks and balances existing in the world of democracy. So, Pono, we actually see that NGOs can actually close up anytime, anywhere. So, Pono, the question remains, are these people trustworthy to donate billions, multi-millions into, into the hands of these people, all in the name of fighting gender equality? So, Pono, I'm going to show you five sectors that the government have actually done very well in fighting gender inequality. So, Pono, the government has said, officially to come up and said that the government has fooled. But, Pono, it's a lie. This is the government that's actually seen that policies Broader policies that covers gender gaps in education, equal income distribution. This is actually a government that sees to the fact that Antinental is actually free in major hospitals. This is a panel, this is a government that's actually seen the fact to the fact that treatment is actually free. So panel, we believe that the government is actually doing a lot of things, and therefore we need this fund, we need this fund to actually enforce. So panel, on my next level of argument, bureaucracy of government. So panel, I feel that the government actually specializes in solving gender inequality faster. We want to talk about the government has different ministries, branches, and agencies. So panel, to this. We said proposition believe that since we are talking about extremely rich people and big donations, that the government is in a better opportunity to implement policies, use this fund world, and actually solve the problem of gender inequality. So with this, I'm proud to propose. Thank you. A goal that ventured into the lion's den will not be alive to tell his story. With this, that was the least speaker from team proposition. And I call upon you to thank for the length of time he made use of. The speech of the lead speaker of side proposition really moved me aside. But rather, he spoke for eight minutes, 31 seconds. Thank you. A quote by Robert Helen, he said, and I quote, you can swear a thousand men by appealing to their opinion speaker, more than you convincing only one man with logic. With this, I call upon the least speaker from team opposition to come and establish the case of opposition. <coughs> this house prefers a world where extremely rich people donate to their government rather than non-governmental organizations to achieve gender equality. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's debate, I as the least speaker of side opposition we open the floor for my team and also analyze to you the fundamental reasons to oppose this motion. My first party speaker will extend my case in today's debate and analyze the second disparity we have with those motions. While my second supporting speaker will dwell more on rebuttals and reaffirmation of the stand of my team. Mr. Shear, before I step into my arguments, I would like to show you how flawed the world of side proposition is. The point of the argument that most of these most of these non-governmental organizations are focused on a certain group. So their arguments will have a response. We that there are still those that are focused on everybody in society. They will have, think about organizations like What's Left, think about organizations like Women Rights and Advancement and Protection of Tanevit, and even the JDPC they mentioned in today's bit. We see that though it is religious based, we see that it's helping other people from other regions in the society. And for that reason, that that argument falls for them in today's bit. They will have, they also brought up the argument on the dynamics of gender, where they told us that the government is making a lot of policies that favor gender equality. Therefore, have, we are going to prove you in today's debate, prove to you in today's debate later on, that the government in no way makes policies that support gender equality. And therefore, have, they brought up the argument on accountability, where they told us that checks and balances exist in the part of side government. Therefore, have, we are also going to prove to you that these things just exist in principle, but are not actually done in society. And therefore, have, they also brought up the argument that these NGOs die off in society after receiving these funds. Therefore, have, we are going to prove to you that it takes a lot of processes for these NGOs to even close down in the society. 
Not to my arguments proper. This and gentlemen, I will be beginning this argument with the explanation of the key concept, non-governmental organizations. By non-governmental organizations, we believe that they are non-profit organizations that are registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission and are channeled towards charity, women protection of human rights, child's rights, and women's emancipation in society. People House, as stands in today's bill to remind that all donations should go to these non-governmental organizations. Yes, yeah, we are going to be proving to you the bureaucratic nature of government vis-a-vis the material nature of this non-governmental organization. On the side part of side government, we see that the government has a lot of loopholes and bureaucratic bottlenecks. It takes a lot of processes and a lot of delays before funds are released into the society. And as these delays are going on, ladies and gentlemen, most of these women are being raped to death. Most of them are beaten to death. Most of them are facing irreparable damages in the society. It's at this point that we apply the principle of justice, which states that justice delayed is justice denied. As long as these women are being delayed by the, uh, delayed of their justice, by this uh, 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 this bureaucratic nature of government, people have we believe that they are being denied justice in society. And as such, there is no reason for these donations to go to side government. Furthermore, we see that the, the misappropriation of funds coming on the part of side government. We the government of today is characterized by corruption, embezzlement, and poor accountability. Rebel House, as this money passes through the various offices, the zeros of the, in this money are constantly being minus. And in the end, we see hundred thousand dollars becoming ten naira in the hands of these women. Rebel House, now consider what is happening in the IDP camps, where the health facilities brought for the relief of these women are constantly being sold off by these government agencies that are bringing up in today's bill. Again, let's see what happened during the COVID-19 palliative. We after this extremely rich people donated to the government. What do we see? We see that they never gave it to the poor ones in society. And in the end, we saw it locked in various warehouses all over Nigeria, including Lagos and even our own Anambra. Okay. What is that story? What is that story? Now, the question we should be asking ourselves at this point is, what is the point of the good message from these extremely rich individuals if it ends up getting to these men late or even not getting to them at all? On the side proposition and that answers this question, we believe that they are flawed in today's debate. Mr. Chair, now compare this bureaucratic nature of government to the humanitarian nature of non-governmental organizations, you see the difference. We believe that these non-governmental organizations are made up of selfless individuals who are moved by love, charity, and the zeal to create a better society. A greater percentage of them are women, and most of them are women that were once victims of gender inequality in society. And as such, they know the travels of these men, the challenges they face in society, and the best way to aid them. Now, consider somebody like Shimaman Dadishe. After she grew, or grew up in a highly patriarchal society, we saw her becoming a feminist, fighting alongside many organizations like the Women's Rights Advancement Protection Alternative. But for somebody like Genevieve Nadi, after she was raped at a very tender age, we saw her coming up in society to open foundations that are now helping women. Okay, consider somebody like Barista Adel Zoe, after she was a victim of gender-based violence, we saw her fighting alongside many organizations like FIDA. This goes a long way to show you that these non-governmental organizations are in the best position to handle this funds. Now that we have, we at this point, we apply the principle of subsidiarity, which states that social issues like gender inequality should be treated by agents first, who are nearest to target victims and secondary, who are consistent in their resolutions. On the part of being nearest to this target victim, where these non-governmental organizations are the best, because the implication of the fact that they are women, like the women we are talking about in this bit, and secondly, that they are, that, that they also lack the official bureaucratic nature and the official nature of government. They will have made that they are the best nearest to these women in question. And then, in the consistency of their resolution, we are going to prove to you the efficiency of this non-governmental organization. They are proven to be more efficient with the little resources that have been receiving in society. They have made enlightenment campaigns workshops, outreaches, rallies, protests to aid, aid women in society. Now, an instance is the setup. We see what happened on the 10th of the 5th of this month, where they used the money given to them by my Akon, Osiwa Akon, to open to, uh, to organize enlightenment campaigns in places like Oji, Nsoka, and Warempa. They, they end gender-based violence and domestic violence. This goes long way to show you that these non-governmental organizations, with the little funds they have been receiving in society, have been doing pretty well. Now I have a point of information. We talked about NGOs solving the problem. It talks a lot, a lot of process before these NGOs close down. But we do know that these NGOs actually belong to individuals. And Don't worry about how. Already in the society, we have proven to you that these NGOs are NGOs that are registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission. And before they shut down, the house, it has to take a lot of processes before they shut down because they are already registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission. And for us, we, we do not see that argument as being relevant in today's debate. Pardon. Now, let's leave the world of finance and efficiency and go pragmatically into society to see between the government and these non-governmental organizations who stand for gender equality the most. On the part of side government general house, we see things that make us to ask the question, does government actually stand for gender equality in the society? Obviously, there are many laws that are discriminating against women in society and they are still standing today. Laws that are today, laws that are discriminating, discriminating against them on the basis of sex, jobs, national transfer and travel recommendations. Rebel House, we are going to cite these various laws to make them speak to you. 
to speak to you. In on the criminal code, section 353, it states that assault against men is a felony, punishable by three years of imprisonment. In section 360, assault against men is a misdemeanor, punishable by two years of imprisonment. Rebel House, what a what an inequality. In section 55, subsection 1D, it legalizes white beating as a corrective measure in society. Now, we are going to take you back, back to President Buhari's comment, where he told us that his wife is meant for the kitchen and other rooms. Rebel House, it is, isn't this a derogatory remark dedicating women to the background in the society? Rebel House, what justifies us giving the money that is meant for gender equality to an organization, to a body that we know that obviously does not stand for gender equality in society? Now, even the laws that we have seen the making society, we see that it is as a result of the pressures from this non-governmental organization. We, a, case, a case study is FIDA. We see how it pressurized the government to approve and enact the Violence Against Person Prohibition Act, which is now enhancing and protecting most women from gender-based violence and domestic violence. Currently, they are reviewing the 1990 constitution to remove the discriminatory past in it and give women a better ground to thrive in society. And so on this ground, we stand to say that these non-governmental organizations should have these donations coming from extremely rich individuals. Finally, the motion for today's debate states, this house prefers the world where extremely rich people donate to the government. The rebel house, extremely rich people. Doesn't it ring a bell? Isn't it the dumb beast of segregation of more evils to come? That is, only the extremely rich people should donate to the government, whereas other members of society that have something to donate shouldn't donate at all, or should rather go to the non-governmental organization. Ladies and gentlemen, what have I been able to give you in today's debate? I've been able to prove to you that the, the bureaucratic nature of the government vis-a-vis -vis the mind, nature of these non-governmental organizations, and that makes it possible and best for these non-governmental organizations to have this donation. I was able to, able to prove to you that the government in no way stands for gender equality in society. And as on this ground, I will propose this motion. Thank you. A toad doesn't run in their time for nothing. It is either it is being chased by something, or something is chasing it. Which is, I say, that was the speaker from the opposition. And not upon the tank power to tell us the length of time he made use of. That was a really hot speech coming from the side, least speaker of side opposition. Anyway, the least speaker of side opposition spoke for eight minutes, nine seconds. Thank you. A quote by Frederick Nathan, he said, and I quote, he who cannot put his thought on eyes should not think of putting a dispute between two agendas. With this, I call upon the first party speaker from team proposition to come and extend the case of proposition. Ladies and gentlemen, we see a side of position that has failed to understand something which we have made very clear in today's debate through our speaker. So we told you that achieving gender equality goes beyond putting on social media about sending 200 girls to school, sharing sending to to the school. These are all actions the government can take with a snap of a finger. So we believe that achieving gender equality actually involves implementing and enforcing policies that store the gender that's an equal income distribution, equal pay, all the insecurity and minimal. These are things that these non-governmental organizations can't do in our society. So we believe that the government are in a better position to actually carry out this act and achieve gender equality by implementing and enforcing its policies and also punishing the defaulter with the power of sanction, which these non-governmental organizations do not also have into this debate. So the House, the motion before us has actually placed a burden on both things. And we believe that the main aim of team preparation in today's debate is to give a justification why we prefer a world where these extremely rich people donate to their government rather than non-governmental organizations to achieve gender equality. So as the first of all, the speaker of the team provision, we would like to refer some more decisions coming from the world opposition and then reaffirm the stand of my team. Society opposition came out to make a mess of themselves through their least speaker when they made mention of the government being corrupted. The House will believe that in this case that corruption exists in both worlds. We see corruption in this non-governmental organization and we also see corruption in the government. But the question now comes in, which of these bodies is more accountable? So based on now on this first speech, he told you that the government is much more accountable than this non-governmental organization. In the sense that these governments are actually democratically elected. So they, they are so democracy actually presumes accountability. In the sense that these people actually owe the citizen accountability. These people also are meant are, are accountable to the United Nations. In 
in Senate, we see clips of sitting presidents being dragged to the ICT due to the fact of due to the fact of fraudulent acts which have been found out in this government actually. So based on that, we believe that this based on that, we believe that the argument brought up by South opposition to this debate holds no water in today's debate. Also, it came on to talk about these social issues. It came on to talk about social issues like gender inequality being attended to by people who are closer to the citizen, the house. We believe that the government is seen in our air. Yeah. We believe that every citizen sees the government's face everywhere he goes. We see cases of in local, we see cases, we can see cases down to the local government where we have, where we see these ministries who actually work in this local government. We see cases of the states where we also see ministries which actually work in this state government. We also see cases of the federal where we also actually see ministries that work towards this gender equality in different sectors in this federal, federal institution. So based on that, we believe that that argument also brought up by side of region to this debate holds no water and should lay, lay low in today's debate. Yes, may I have it? Can you justify the reason for that? The House, we believe that these governments are more accountable than this non-governmental organization. In the sense that this government, this government which we already know are democratically elected, presumes accountability to the citizens. So based on it, we believe that donating to this government actually is much more uh, donating to this go government motion is an advantage on the side of these citizens. In the sense that they tend to get a financial run on how the donation was carried out. But we see of this non-governmental organization when they're being donated to, we see of them closing up with these donations and grants which, was, which were given to them. So based on that, we believe that it would be a risk if this extreme rich people should donate to this non-governmental organization to achieve gender equality. So the House. <coughs> so by the way, one of the criteria that should be used in judging this debate is hinged on this question. Which of these bodies that is the non-governmental organizations and governments, will these donors be more willing to donate to? And based on my substantive argument, I'll be showing you why these donors who are, why these donors will be more likely, more willing to uh, uh, donate to the government. These donors who we have already characterized through our list speaker as extremely rich people, these people who are known that, these people's networks are known to exceed one b a billion dollars. These people are, are known to be, to be business tycoon and look for every possible means in order for them to make profit and money. So based on that, we believe that these people should actually donate to their government rather than these non-governmental organizations. So ladies and gentlemen, on my first example argument, I'll bring in the case of concept of optimum maximization of donations. So based on this general, I'll be giving you two levels of analysis. On my first analysis, I'll be telling you about the incentive we can be giving to this this incentive you can be given to this, um, which I'm giving to this extremely rich people, in order for them to encourage them to actually donate more. So based on you see incentives like tax breaks and visibility. These are all incentives that can be given to this extremely rich people by this not government, by this government, and not this non-governmental organization. In the sense that these incentives, like tax break, if they should be given to this to this extremely rich people as a form of gratitude for the donation they have actually given, hence it encourages and maximizes the donation which are actually given by this. On my second level of the line, so we talk about the nature of human beings. Now we believe that all human beings work on the principle of give and take. So basically, now we see that every human, every individual who actually gives you something, expects something in return. So we tend to see that this extremely rich people, if they should donate, if they should donate, we tend to see that they expect something in return. And one of the things we they expect in return are these tax breaks and visibility. Now based on now we believe that these non-governmental organizations who are who be side of opposition are actually have gained after saying that they should be donated to, we tend to that these people have no right in giving this people tax, tax break. So based on that, we believe that it is constitutional legal for this government to actually incentivize extremely rich people with tax breaks and visibilities. The House, on my second substantive argument, I was talking about the bureaucracy in the government. It is quite un un unfortunate and appalling that side of opposition, opposition have failed to understand the bureaucracy which brought up in the government. So based on this, we believe that there is a specialization in the government. We tend to see networks of ministries in the government. In the sense that this, in the sense that this government have, in the sense that this government actually carry, carries out a lot of, a lot of tasks in order to take care of this gender, in a, gender equality through the help of a lot of ministries like the Ministry of Justice, the Ministry of Work and Finance, the Ministry of Education. These are all ministries which are under, under the government, which all help in the fight for gender inequality. Now, based on that, we believe that non-governmental organizations has no role, has no role, based on it, we believe that this non-governmental organization has no ministries that actually look into the, this gender inequality in different sectors. So the House, what do we want? Do we want a world whereby a particular body looks into different gender inequality in the different sectors? Talk about sectors in education, talk about sectors in work, or do we want a case whereby the government as a whole body having different branches of ministries should look into these different sectors differently and not a body who actually faces a particular sector. So they have based on that we believe that these extreme 
We prefer a world where it's actually marriage people should donate to their government rather than non-governmental organizations. So based on, also, I mean, just, just to tell you argument, we talk about the argument of longevity. The house, a question comes up. Which of these bodies actually last longer? Now, it was proven in 2015 that in South Africa, precisely, 45 of the non-governmental organizations actually folded up due to cuts actually followed up with donations and grants of people. This time is seen as a risk if we should donate to these people. This time is seen as a major disadvantage if we should donate to this non-governmental organization. And based on that, we believe that the government who actually last longer, the government who is actually transnational are in a better position to hold this donation and actually achieve gender equality with this donation which are actually given to them. So also, we believe on the argument of reduction of tax burdens on this tax bill. So over the years in the study school, we believe that this government has actually been working with tax revenues. These governments have lots of work we have to do. Now, this gender equality is actually a new cost on the government. And to do this, we believe that they need money to enforce policies that actually fight this gender equality. So based on that, we believe that these donations coming from extreme, extreme rich people is actually a supplementary money in order for them to use and enforce these policies, which have, have already been has already been drought, but remains for it to be uh, implemented. So based on that, we believe that side opposition has no ground into this debate. Also, we talked about the argument, also we talked about this argument of oversight. In the, that the, in the sense that the government has more opportunities of supervising and managing these problems of gender, supervising the, the fight for gender inequality in different circles. So based on that, we see more reasons why it's more willing for these donors to this do not, so actually donate to this government. So now, what was I able to bring to you in today's bit? I brought you arguments based on the concept of automatic maximization, maximization of duration, where I actually told you about the incentives that can be given to this extremely rich group in order for them to encourage, in order to encourage their donations. And every other argument which I also brought that on the site provision, which shows more willingness of these donors to actually donate to our, to our world. So based on that, let the motion stand. It is easier to give a monkey a palm wine but to collect the call for him is very difficult. Which is, I say, that was the first practical from Tim position. And I call upon the thank you the amount of time he made use of. Wow, this debate is really getting hot. I can feel it. Even my watch, too, can feel it. As you can see, vapor has covered all over my watch, the glass of my screen. I really hope this hotness will stop. Anyway, the first opportunity, sorry, the first supporting speaker of the side proposition spoke for eight minutes for three seconds. Thank you. A quote by Paul Herman, he said, and I quote, Do not be afraid to approach something new. Think of the amateurs who be the Titanic and the professionals who be the art. With this, I call upon the first party speaker from the opposition to extend the case of opposition. Panel. On 23 July 2021, last Friday, precisely, President Muhammad Wari went to his hometown, Dara, located in Katsina State, and he stated it categorically clear that charity donors should go directly to the individual in need and not to the government. Mr. Chair, isn't it so obvious that even the government does not want us to bring these donations to them because they know that it will be a source of lobbying and corruption in such a way that these extreme rich men will use it to be looking for unnecessary contract contract from the government. Mr. Chair, nevertheless, we shall take the side proposition at their best. Only from their list, list speaker, they brought, up, they brought up a lot of they brought up a lot of arguments. They said that the government is authoritative and as such should be in the best position to solve this problem of gender inequality. Only from my list speaker, I told you that these things are just written down and not practicing that the government is, is even discriminatory in itself. He, showed, he cited various areas of the constitution that the government is making discriminatory law against these women. And as such, the government should not be in the best position to foster gender, gender equality. Or if the least speaker told us that in 2018, that five NGOs we are sure that because they siphon people's money. So she believe that the, that is the worst fallacy coming up in today's debate. Because we believe that in because we believe that these NGOs are registered to the CAC. And in case of any any 
any, any misappropriation, these people can easily be dragged and called to office. Mr. She also said that these people, that they are going to use the principle of optimal maximization. He also said that they are going to give incentives to these people that donate to the government. Mr. She, he believe that in this, such a world, that they are making the rich richer and the poor poorer. Because such a world, you see that these extreme rich people are giving incentives, whereas people who have something to donate to the government will not be allowed to donate. And as such, we, are, we believe that their world is a discriminatory world in, t in today's debate. Again, the Rebel House, we asked their first supporting speaker a point of information. And we told them that 97.3% of extreme rich people and even foreign organizations donate to, this, to, to these NGOs. Up to now, we still receive no credible answer to that point of information. We also told them that the government, they also told us that the government carry a lot of job, carry a lot of responsibility. And as such, we believe that if the government carry a lot of responsibility, it is now it is now justifiable to give this NGO the right to fight against this problem of gender inequality, to avoid the bureaucracy in government and to fight for this problem of gender inequality. They spoke on the longevity of the government. Mr. Chair, I believe that the government does not even last long because after four years of office, we see these government personnel run away from office. Most of them enter from one office to another. Most of them go to abroad where we can no longer call them to call to court to answer for the money they siphon. And as such, I believe that the government is not even in the best position to handle this form. Mr. Chair, the government is made up of inefficient, made of self-seeking politicians who are not interested in the affairs of these women. And as such, I believe that there is no point giving them this fund donated by these ex-rich men for gender inequality. Despite the tax and rates and revenues and even the foreign aid that this government receives on daily basis, we still see this problem of gender inequality still existing in status quo. But this NGO, that's why the fact that they have limited source of income, they have been working hard to solve this problem of gender inequality. And as such, giving them these donations made by these extreme rich men is more justifiable in today's debate. Only for my next speaker, we will give you the principle justification when we are in opposition of this motion. When we give you the principle of justice and the principle of subsidiarity. On principle of justice, we told you that justice delayed is justice denied. Up to now, self vision is set to engage us on that. We have made the issue of misappropriation of funds. We have the issue of NEMA being accused of siphoning recovered funds. We have the issue of AFC chairman being accused of siphoning recovered funds. We have the incident issues of IMA stolen money, even in the jump office. We have the issue of Ponte, the man in charge of NDC, Nigeria Delta Development Council, who, who fainted in House of Reps because he was asked to make account of the money he siphoned. We have the issue of Gosu Ababi, who also fainted when he was asked to make account of the money he siphoned. This is just to show you that the government is not even the best position to handle these funds donated by these extreme rich men. Only for my list speaker, he told me that the government is even discriminatory in itself. We cited various areas of the constitution that the government is making discriminatory law against these women. Now, on that point, we gave them a plausible question. When we told them, why are you giving this government that do not even stand for gender equality money to fight against gender inequality? Up to now, we still receive no credible answer to that question. Mr. Chair, this why Mr. Chair, believe that this NGO, if we can be able to support them with these funds donated by this extreme rich men, they will be able to eradicate this problem of gender inequality in the status quo. He told me that these NGOs are made up of individuals who must have passed through this segregation in the society. And as such, when they eventually come up with the society, they tend to fight passionately against this problem of gender inequality and as such meaning that giving them this money meant for gender inequality we help to eradicate this problem totally in the status quo. He also told you that the government is bureaucratic in nature. When he told you that before policies are made in the government, it has to pass through a lot of processes. And as such, it is rooted to delay in decision making and delay in release of funds. Up to now, self vision is yes, is yet to engage us on that. He said that various places where these NGOs have been working hard to solve this problem of gender inequality. Now, we have the issue in 2050 when United Nations funds for women are special when it's communities like Ayo, a kids and a boy to fight against female genital mutilation. We have the issue on 16 July where women rights advancement and protection alliance went to communities like Zanfara and Castina to to discuss the traditional and religious leaders on the need to foster gender inequality, gender equality in their affairs. Mr. Chair, we believe that this NGO are more efficient than the government in tackling this problem of gender inequality. Again, the report house, this NGO went as far as pressurizing the government to make sure that the government foster this gender equality in their affairs. Most of them are opening branches in gross parts of the nation to make sure that everyone out there receives equal access and rights as men. It's because of the efficiency of this NGO. The United States ID left partnering with the government and is not partnering with this NGO.
Mr. Shea, you believe that giving them these funds, donated by this extra rich men, is the best alternative to solve this problem of gender inequality. And the major problem we have with this motion is that the motion of today states this house prefer a world where extra rich individual donates the government and a non-governmental organization. Now, by extra rich individual, we don't mean people who are ordinary rich in the society or people who are just rich. We mean people who are excessively rich in the society. And as such, on that point, we are asking self on a question. What do you ask for measuring people who are excessively rich in the society? Until they tell us that, we take them as relevant in today's debate. I should mean I'm rich. I should mean I'm just I'm ordinary rich. And I want to donate this end to the government to solve this problem of gender inequality, I should not donate. Not that I should go to this NGO. You see that by the measure of this motion, that this motion is even discriminatory in itself because it's against the rich, poor against the rich, and the poor against the extreme rich in the society. What do you see in such a world where only extreme rich people are allowed to donate to the government? In such a world that is more pronounced classism and discrimination. In such a world that people are arranged and given opportunity according to their economic advantage. Now, what does quite the side position in trying to solve a problem, escalate this is the already existing problem in the status quo. It's a shame, you believe in such a world that the government will be influenced by what this extra-rich individual dictates in the society because he who plays the piper dictates the truth. Mr. Sheriff, the government will no longer be doing what the majority wants in society. They will be doing what this extra people demands. And we believe that it's against even the democracy in which their world thinks the practice best. Mr. Sheriff, we believe in such a world there is more discrimination and in such a world there is bound Women are bound to be segregated and relegated further to the background. You believe that the world of separation is a horrible world and no human life will exist in such a world. With this, I oppose. A chameleon is not afraid of any colors because he is the master of all the colors. With this, I say, that was this first British car from true opposition. And I call upon him for the length of time he made use of. Remember that quote that says, when two elephants fight, the grass suffer. Don't remember house. My moderator and I are really suffering here. We are the grasses. Remember house. Anyway, the first supporting speaker of the side opposition spoke for eight minutes, nine seconds. Thank you. A quote by Robert Fedman, he said, and I quote, Vita mutanta non talento, which means life can be changed, but can never be destroyed. Which is, I call upon the Scots Fortiska from Team Proportion to come and reaffirm the side opposition, to opposition. Panel, we believe side opposition showed us how confused they are in today's debate. But then again, side proposition is going to get them at their best in today's debate. From the lead speaker, he came up bringing up arguments on today's debate to so why they stand to, um, to oppose today's motion. But the general house, we believe that all their arguments and all their analysis were very weak to stand to our arguments, which side proposition brought up in today's debate. First, he brought up one of their major arguments, the principle of justice, where he tried to say that justice, that justice denied, that the government denies justice, kind of that we aren't effective towards justice. The general house, let me give you a clear analysis of things that the government has been doing. In 17 December 2020, about 344 ground and um, Kankara boys who were abducted were all rescued through to, to the government. In 14 April 2014, 164 girls, as of 276 girls, 276 Chibok girls were all rescued. This was the help of the government. In 19 February 2018, 110 Napchi girls, one, out of the 110 Napchi school girls who were abducted, 107 were rescued. General House, there is one question for side opposition. Where were these NGOs during this time? We believe side opposition should come up stage and clear this analysis. The General House, he also brought up another argument on the principle of that the NGOs are closer to the people. The General House, we believe this shows us a confused world. First of all, we have our councillors, we have the local government chairman, we have people working in the local government, up to the state level, up to the federal, up to the, um, to the federal territory. The General House, we believe the government is all around. But in the world of the NGO, we tend to say that the NGO is soft and cooperated. I can wake up today and decide to open an NGO without even registering in the government. This was what how side opposition contradicted themselves in today's debate. When they tried to say that these NGOs are registered, some of them are registered by the government and cooperated. When the main mention of the CAC, the General 
our house. We believe that any NGO that is incorporated into the government gets grants from the government. And for such that these NGOs get grants from the, from the government, it is justified that these extreme, extremely rich people donate to the government. He also brought up an argument whereby he's brought up the argument that it's hard for NGOs to try to rebut the argument of our little speaker. Whereby he said that it's hard for NGOs to close down the general house. But let me give you a clear analysis of what happened currently in our society. In 2015, it was said in 2015, Nigeria had seen in 2015 in Nigeria, 21 NGOs suddenly closed down with people's money, and to today they haven't been brought to book. No one knows their whereabouts. In 2018, even in Kenya, 17 NGOs all closed down with people's money. The general house. We believe that these are things side opposition should try to clarify in today's debate. If not, side opposition, side opposition are really the winners of today's debate. He also brought up another argument where he tried to prove it, where he tried to say that corruption and embezzlement runs in our world. The general house. We believe that this shows the lack of unpreparedness of the world of side opposition. From our list, we can already show you whether we believe that corruption that whether we already showed you that um that there's corruption both in the world of side opposition and the world of side opposition. But then again, which is more accountable when this thing gets to its peak? And we believe that generally the government is more accountable. Because we believe that through our list speaker, we show you whereby that um we showed you that all the experts is being made by the government is being sent to the state House of assembly where it's being probed down to the last five combo that was spent. But in the NGOs, we see nothing like that. Whereby due to the fact that it's my personal, it's my personal organization, I decide to spend the money how I want it. I decide to give the money to who I believe. So the generals, we believe that side proposition is justified, that the government is justified to release, to receive these funds from extremely rich people. Yes, I have a POI. What justifies us in trying to solve the problem of gender inequality, great problems of classism? I'm crossing up your eye. The general house. We believe that side opposition still don't understand this mission. The general house. I'm going to be answering that question with just one rhetorical question. Which general house will be answering itself? What is the use of donating to this to people who can only advocate but can't implement policies? What is the use of giving to people who can only persuade but can't take actions? We believe side opposition are already falling into this debate. He brought up he brought up another argument of efficiency. Where he brought up the argument of protest and enlightenment and enlightenment campaigns being held by NGOs. The general house. But we believe that solving gender equality, just by like the dynamics brought about this speaker, goes beyond those things. We believe we have, we have um, gender, in, in, we see gender inequality in uh, income distribution, we see gender inequality in unequal pay, we see gender, uh, gender inequality in education, and we believe that what we need are policies to solve this, not campaigns, not sharing sanitary parts to 100 ladies, not posting on social media about this and that. We need um, policies, we need authoritative power, and we believe that the government is in the best place to receive these funds. He also brought up the argument, he took, then he brought up the argument towards the end of his speech, that the president President is when he made the statement that the president made a statement that his wife belongs to the kitchen. The general house we also see a confused world. Through our list speaker, we already showed you that when we have cases of whereby um the, the, the citizens change their government to the IC, ICIC due to the fact that the president himself goes against their government. We believe that, that the president makes such statement doesn't mean that the government of Nigeria will dwell on that statement. We believe that even if the president tries to advocate this for the, for the whole for the whole citizens for the whole, for the whole Nigeria, we believe that the country on their own can take this president to the ICIC to, for this matter to be deliberated on. So we believe that that's a very weak analysis for sites of Team All Hallows to raise up in today's debate. Also, he brought up the argument, he brought up a great fallacy whereby he tried to ask our first of all a POI and then say that 97.3% of NGOs donate, of, of, of extremely rich people donate to NGOs. The general has one question comes to your mind. How many extremely rich people do we have in Nigeria? How many extremely rich people do we have in, in Africa? We believe that this, that the side opposition based their argument on fallacy, but the generals we believe that all the arguments are flawed in today's debate. Over to the first supporting speaker. He tried to reaffirm what, what the Alit speaker said, whereby he made the message, he, he, made a, he said that the president made a statement that donations should be made to charity. The general house, this also shows how contradicting the word of side opposition is. Because the president never said donations by extremely rich people should be made to charity. He never said donations by extremely rich people should be made to NGOs. The house, side opposition believes that yes, donations can be made to NGOs, but then again, this extra Extremely rich people donating to the um, donating to the NGOs isn't allowed. Instead, they should donate to the government because we believe that uh, that the argument of our first opposition speaker, whereby I showed you the um, concept of financial power, whereby the NGOs tried to bring up the act of voting against go, go, against government, due to the fact that they feel they have enough financial power like the government. We already showed you through the through the yardstick, showing you a side opposition that doesn't listen to this debate. When the first opposition speaker say that we have to show them the yardstick, how we tend to know extremely rich people. Through our next speaker, we already told you that these extremely rich people are people who their networks are above a billion dollars. And we have like five of them in Nigeria, ranging from um, Mike Adonuga down to um down to the, the, from Mike Adonuga down to Dangote and the rest of them. And we believe that these are people that their, their networks are against are above a billion dollars. So the generous, we believe that donating, giving this money to NGOs, especially in Nigeria, or giving this money to NGOs, 
to NGOs in general is not what side proposition will advocate for. Because it tends to make these NGOs revolt against government power. Also, he tried to, he tried to um, counter arguments whereby he said that giving incentives to these extremist rich people is trying to make making the rich richer and the poor poorer. Whereby he tried to say that our world deals on corruption. The general house. One thing we believe that that one thing for to achieve to achieve something we want, we have to we have to think critically. The general house. Whereby one gives you five billion naira and you give him an incentive of tax break of only three hundred thousand naira. The house who is losing. We believe side opposition needs to sit down, think, make a clear analysis on this motion before trying to revolt our points. He also tried to say that uh, he also brought up the argument of self-seeking politicians, General House. We already, we already know that the government has its own laws. The government stands on its own. There is no how a politician can control the whole government, no matter the amount of money. And in our, in our world, we already believe that even when this um, government, when we see that this government are already looting this money, we have cases of whereby presidents, whereby governors who try to loot Nigerian money, even after their four years, um, even after their four years in government, still yet their case, uh, their case we are still looked into. And when this money was recovered, so even our country, Nigeria, even our states and number states. Is still using this money towards the development of our country. So we believe that side proposition, side proposition couldn't counter any of our arguments in today's debate. The general has what with side proposition of in today's debate. We brought up first show the dynamics of gender equality, the main cost of gender equality, which we believe if side opposition should really win today's debate, they should show us how these NGOs tend to solve the problem of unequal pay, the problem of income distribution, the problem of wealth gap, the problem of educate, the problem of unequal pay. These are the main causes of gender equality. And not trying to solidate with the general house about sharing sanitary powers, about posting on social media. This is not how we got to the bureaucracy of government. Robert will tell that the government has set us to its work. We got to the idea of the concept of maximization of resources. We will tell you that the government are in the best way to use these resources. So the general house, I believe I've been able to convince you why we believe these extremist people should donate to the government, not charity. And with this, my team and I are proud to propose this motion. Thank you. When the bed pitches on you, neither the bed nor the roof is at first, which is idle upon the time particular length of time he made use of. Remember what I said earlier, that anything you hear from the mouth of the speakers in today's debate is not based on the view of the speakers, but rather what the motion demands. For those that are wise, you understand what I mean. Anyway, the second supporting speaker offside proposition spoke for 8 minutes, 32 seconds. Thank you. Benjamin Franklin once said, and I quote, it is good to be good, regardless of the person who is doing the wrong. With this, I call upon the second speaker from Team Opposition to come here and affirm the stand of opposition. This house prefers a world where extreme rich people donate to the government rather than NGOs to achieve gender equality. The Honorable House. My name is May Antonio and I am the second supporting speaker of the team of opposition in today's case. The Honorable House, we believe to this motion place two burdens on both teams. First, on our friends in argument, to first of all prove the reason why they believe that the government is in the best position to handle these funds to help to achieve gender equality. And second, to give us the reason why they prefer a world where extremely rich individuals are to donate to the government rather than NGOs. And we, the team of opposition, to first of all prove the reason why we believe that NGOs are most efficient and most resolute to use these funds to solve the problem of gender equality. And second, to give our second problem with, to, to, with this base, that is a problem of these extremely rich individuals donating to the government rather than NGOs. And also give the hands analysis and also what will happen if this motion is meant to be bound to in today's debate. In the House, with that argument, we believe that we did justice to it. The House, we saw a lot of plausible arguments coming from our friends in argument. But the House, we show you how full those arguments are. He said that we did not counter his arguments, but we show you repeatedly that my first this speaker, my first supporting speaker, and my second, and I myself, second supporting speaker, have countered all those arguments in today's debate. First, Mr. Chair, the came with argument that these NGOs are religious and ethnically affiliated. The Honorable House, to that argument, we have three sort of responses. First, the Honorable House, and this speaker will be giving a litany of examples of NGOs that are spread, spread our wings throughout the whole country. He gave you instances of Port Clef, Rapa, FIDA, and the rest of them. We obviously, we see that these NGOs have their branches spread over the country. We see the possible things that are doing in the various societies, even from the north to the west, to the east to the north. He gave you even locations of where these people are actually doing those things in our community. And then, Mr. Chair, a second response to that is, do these people actually help the society? No, but even if 
we should believe that some of them are actually ethnically and religiously affiliated. No, perhaps for the fact that they help every, every individual in society to solve the problem of gender inequality, no, perhaps we are still justified in giving the funds to them. Here, Mr. Chair, isn't the government not the same? Let us be pragmatic for once in today's debate. What we have seen that the government of Nigeria already today is even siphoning funds only for a particular part of the country. How many projects have been done in the local government area by the federal government? How many has been done by the, by the state government? You know, perhaps this goes a long way to show you that actually we believe that these NGOs are in best position. Again, Mr. Chair, I came up with the issue that the NGOs depend on the ideologies of their leaders. You know, because all those things in today's debate, the ideologies of these leaders are for gender equality. But let us look for at the support of team government. Obviously, we see that the ideology of team government is for what? It's for gender inequality. Because at this point, we're giving a litany of laws that are standing for gender inequality in society. So this is really show us that we are still more justified in today's debate. Let me search here. This is more reasons why we believe that these NGOs are in the best position to handle those funds to achieve gender equality. Because the has, since their leaders have the ideology that everyone should be equal in society, therefore, they will be in the best position to handle these funds to achieve gender equality. Again, Mr. Chair, the goal of the issue shows that billionaires are billionaires and rich people, SUV people that are referring to this debate. What's a fallacy? That is why my question this speaker came up as a question. So, if I'm not a billionaire, I'm just an ordinary rich man, I'm just a non citizen society, and I want to donate to the government, that's why I should just go and donate to the NGOs, I should not donate at all. They get, tell us that we should donate to the NGOs. You know, house, this is the notion that I'm generating. You know, house, for the fact that these people should donate to the NGOs, this is the notion that so that the people have more trust in the NGOs than the government. And this is the show that the government are just looking for what? More funds to put into their pockets. Again, Mr. Chair, the key argument that it involves making policies to solve gender equality. Why should we keep on debating on a matter we believe that's already specifically a function for a particular group in today's debate? No, because obviously we see that a particular group in today's debate, that is the team government, are body to with this responsibility, first of all, to make laws and policies to solve gender equality. So we should not start pushing it to the team MGO to tell us that we should use this funds to solve gender equality. No, because obviously this goes to show that they are still confused in today's debate. This is the house. We believe that the job of the government is to solve the problem of gender inequality. So why are they giving them funds? Why don't we have a house? We all here pay taxes. We all here go to government hospitals, and those government hospitals to give account to the government. What has the government done with those funds? How many laws are the government promulgated to ensure gender equality if not pushed by these NGOs? Obviously, your answer is good as mine. May I have your point of information, sir? Yes, yeah, they can try to, in your initial statement, you made a mention whereby these NGOs are put in laws and everywhere. But the general house, I want you to clarify the general house, whereby we see the idea of insecurity, especially in the laws. How does these NGOs tend to get closer to these people and solve the problem of gender inequality? Wow. Obviously, this goes to show that the team government have really placed themselves in a very tight corner. This goes to show that the team government have not even solved the problem that they are meant to solve. Therefore, they are not even more efficient to solve the problem of gender equality. They are not solving the problem of insecurity in the north. Therefore, they are not even in the best position to solve the gender equality. These people have a lot of things on their desk to solve. This only show that we should, first of all, give me a team NGO who has less things to solve in today's debate the opportunity to solve the problem of gender inequality so it will be regret from our society. With that, I have some point of information. Here is a share came up with the issue that the enforcement of this law requires money. You know, because obviously I've already told you that we recall these laws are that are meant to be enforced, not even require little or no income. Obviously, we're already paying that. Even this laws actually needs money for enforcement. We're already paying tax to the government. A lot of government parasites are already giving account to the government of the money they get from the citizens. So obviously, this was going to show us that the government don't need our funds. Again, the House, let us look at what Mr. President said categorically last week, Friday, when he went to his home Tandara. We do not need your funds. Obviously, you show that this debate is even on the table. Here is the check. Here is the issue that the NGOs have the basic power, but the government uses authority to power to solve problems. The Rubber House. The government has authoritative power. Yes, we agree. But what have they done with that authoritative power? No, as we say that the government are just sitting there waiting for these NGOs to persuade them before they make these laws. Why is it not giving the issue of this Violence Against Persons Act, which was promulgated and pushed by the feeder? The people are supposed to use the rule which shows that the government cannot be using that authoritative power for anything. So, therefore, they are not in the best position to handle these funds. Here is a share. Even that these NGOs with this so called business power have done a lot of personal things to society. All those many people have given me a return and a catalog of examples where this NGO has abused this power. This their so-called persuasive power to do a lot of positive things than team government. We saw no examples, or saw no even serious examples from team provision, just where the government actually did these things in our society. Even Mr. Chair came up here with a competency of NGOs, said that the NGOs close up after they fall, after these funds are given to them, giving us five examples. The House, this goes back to what my new speaker already said. He said categorically the beginning of his speech that the CS, that the NGOs are referring to these days, and the NGOs are registered by the Corporate Affairs Commission. Before these NGOs close up, they must give a six months warrant to the CAC. So we don't see that how that argument is possible. Again, the has they fail to give us the source of their statistics in this debate, and they also fail to give us the names of those five NGOs that closed up in 2018. The House, that argument is flawed in this debate. Here is a share. Let us look at the team government. The measures that were given to them during the COVID-19 era, what they use it for? 
We saw the case of where these funds were made signed phone to private accounts, where these funds were packed in various warehouses in the nation, even our own dear state, Anambra, what a pity. Where as many people were dying, where as many children were crying, where as many other people needed these funds, terrible house. Others, we don't want the recurrence of such things to happen in our society. That is why we really should trust the government again with these funds. Rather, we should trust Team MGO. They must have they came up with the issue of checks and money on Team Government. No house, only to my Instagram, my post of the speaker, these things are already written on book, not even practice in this space. No house, others, we say that these people are a cabal of people who are trying to put our money in the society. So why are we not giving them credits for this? Let me say, they came up with the argument that they say that the NGOs receive grants from the government. What a fancy it is bit. No house, obviously, the NGOs receive no grants from the government. These NGOs are private owned, only that they are registered with the CAC to make sure that they are organizations that are working in Nigeria. Let me say, they came up with the issue that what is the use of giving funds to the NGOs when they don't do anything in society? No house, we really are like a great use because obviously, we see that they have done a lot of possible things in society. Let me say, they came up with the that we are making a fault policy by saying 97.3 people in society. No house, obviously, we meant 97.3 people. Among the people that are in the society, that is it as 100 means rich men in the society, like 7.3% of them give to these NGOs. So that gives a real show that they're not understanding our concept in space. Let me search here, they ask us a question. Which body, which body will these people be more willing to donate to? No, about obviously, we say that it's an NGO. Because we see that a lot of people are already donating to these NGOs. A lot of international societies are already going to these NGOs. So, no, how this only shows that the people, the masses, the whole world wants to affect the NGOs. No, how to this bit. What do we have to give you? We gave a lot of possible arguments which the people wish are affected our counter. We gave you what we mean by CAC. We gave you what we mean by NGOs. Why they say that they are registered by the CAC? We told you the regarding nature of the government. I gave you a litany of reasons why the government is corrupt and should not be giving these funds to this problem. You know, how we give us a second despite to this motion. The reason why they propose estimation. No more house with this. We will have waiting more house carries today. Thank you. The cock is not afraid of the door because familiarity covers all things. With this, I call upon the thank you for the length of time he made use of. Thank goodness that this hotness has stopped. Anyway. The second supporting speaker of the side opposition spoke for 8 minutes, 24 seconds. Remember, the reply speech will be for 4 minutes. Thank you. Do you know our house? It is getting hotter, true, true. But please, do not run away. Stay with me, we thank you, because I want you all to witness it with me. Which is, I call upon the side opposition to come and give us their reply speech. The House, it's a pity that the motion for today's debate didn't just place a burden on both teams. It placed two burdens on both teams. First, to prove the efficiency of the organization they stand for, and secondly, to prove why it should be only extremely rich individuals that should donate to the government, or why it should not be only extremely rich individuals that should donate to the government. Rebel House, we saw that on our own part, we proved our burden, but side proposition, we are unable to prove that. Accordance to the that they have failed in today's debate. Again, Rebel House, we saw that they committed what is called chasing in debate. They kept on avoiding our questions. Either they do not understand those questions or they, 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 they just wanted to avoid those questions. First, we asked them, already in the status quo, we saw that 97.3% of international organizations and extremely rich people in the society are donating to NGO. They should justify a reason for that. Rebel House, they never did that in today's space. Again, we just said, we asked them, what justifies us to give funds meant for gender equality to an organization, a body like government that doesn't even stand for gender equality in society. Rebel House, they were unable to answer those questions. Again, we asked them, what is the point of the good news from these extremely rich individuals if it gets to this mandate or else of not getting to them at all? Rebel House, these questions were left un unattacked by side proposition. Again, we asked them, what justifies us in trying to solve a problem, create more problems, and even uh, escalate the already, already existing ones? But we saw that side proposition were unable to attack these questions. And for us, the way that they are that are filled in today's debate. Again, we have, on their own part, we saw many arguments coming out from that side. But we are going to prove you how we tackle those arguments. First, they brought up the argument on the dynamics of gender equality, where they brought up that the, 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 
the main focus of gender equality should be on policies. We will have we prove to them that there have been many poor policies that have been made by side government in today's debate. We will give them a, a litany of policies that are against gender equality that have been promulgated by side government. Again, we will have we told them that even the little ones we see the government making in society are the ones that they did as a result of pressure from these non-governmental organizations. We still gave you the issue of FIDA that prevented the government to approve the Violence Against Person Prohibition Act, which is now saving most women in society. And furthermore, we prove to you that it doesn't even require money to make policies in the society. What it requires is for the pairs and peppers to start rolling. Of course, even the side government has failed both in today's case. Again, we have the of the argument on accountability, where they gave us issues like checks and balances and authoritative, authoritative power. This and gentlemen, that argument will give them a response. We told them that these things just exist in principles, but they are not obtainable in society. We cited many examples of misappropriation of public funds. We we even told you the issue of Bondi, who was called to come and give an account, but he fainted in court, and to today, nothing has been done about that. Of course, we the side government have failed in today's case. Again, they brought up the argument on the optimal maximization of donations. This and gentlemen, we all they were the told us that they will be giving in incentives to this extremist individual society. They will House, we prove to them that in their world they just make the rich richer and poor poorer. Now, assuming that I am an age, I am an ordinary rich member of society and I have such to donate, so I shouldn't donate to the government to receive such an incentive. This goes on way to show you how discriminatory and how flawed their world is. Again, we have the one of the arguments on longevity. On longevity, we prove to them that on the long run, that we see that it is even the government that doesn't last long in society because we see that every four years the government is changed. So why should we give these donations to side government? I will see that side provision have failed. On their own part. But the whole of our own part, we gave you plausible arguments that impresses critical minds. First, we gave you the issue of the bureaucracy of government, we will give you the issue of delay, and gave you the principle of justice. We also give you the issue of misappropriation of public funds coming from side government. Furthermore, we gave you the material nature of this non governmental organization, we will give you the principle of subsidiarity, prove to you the proximity of this non governmental organization, and then their consistency in their resolutions. Again, we have, we prove to you that the government is even against gender equality in society. And furthermore, we showed you how their world looks, that their world is the world of class where people are arranged according to their economic prowess and they're given opportunities according to their economic prowess. Again, we gave you the issue of oligarchy. When we told you that these people will keep on influencing the government and the government will end up becoming a government for the extremely rich, for, um, for, for a government by extremely rich, for the extremely rich and then to the extremely rich. Again, we gave you the how it is even going to enhance gender inequality in society. And all these questions and all these arguments are still standing on attack by side profession. And for that reason, we believe that they failed in today's debate. Thank you. The Congo has decided to take a combat posture because he has been informed that the person coming to his house is a good restaurant. With this, I call upon the thank you for the length of time the side opposition made use of their reply speech. Oh my god, I can't bear this anymore. The hotness has started again. Anyway, the this speaker of side opposition spoke for four minutes, 15 seconds. Thank you. I call upon the side proposition to come and close their case of opposition. on both side proposition and side opposition to this argument. And on the world of side proposition, it's actually to prove to you why we believe extremely rich people should actually donate to the government in solving problems like gender and equality. Why the world of side opposition is to prove to you why NGOs are in a better position to do that. So, Pono, we believe that in today's argument, there are four major things side opposition were trying to use against side proposition, and this should be the reason why they should be. First, they brought up the issue of corruption. Second, they brought up the issue of bureaucracy in government. Third, they brought up the problems in insecurity, and that the government has failed in trying to make policies. But, Pono, we're going to show you how the major stance that is using against him, Sam Michaels, was crushed throughout this speech. Well, the, when they brought up the, about the issue of corruption and people fainting and the rest of them, but now, through my speech, I told you that corruption exists in both worlds. So through my speech, I told you that our world, so the question should be, which world is more accountable? Well, I told you that it's based on the argument of accountability, that democracy presents, presents accountability for the government, and checks and balances exist in the government when it comes to accountability. But now, side opposition failed to show us how these two major criteria exist in that world. So, but now, we believe when it comes to anything corruption,
corruption. It exists in both worlds. But which world is more accountable? So second panel, they brought about the issues of bureaucracy in government. But we believe we trashed this down. When we told you that the government actually has different sectors and agencies that work for the rights of this female. They are for the rights of this female. Right from the local government, the state government, the federal government. So any emergency issue will be handled by the government. Why do the government is in the face of every individual today? Tomorrow, they brought up the problems of insecurity. But we threw a question to them that when it comes to when it comes to comes, when it comes to when, that the government has killed people. But we said that in terms of cheap orders, then she goes and then by see what the government could do. We asked them what could the NGOs do based on this. To this, the whole house has failed to give us an answer in today's debate. And part of they said that the government are full. But earlier I told you that the government has actually bought policies that work for the betterment of these females. We are talking about policies that cover gender gap in income distribution, policies that cover gender gap in education. When I said that to you, instances that these policies have worked. So the ideology coming from side provision that the government has told has is totally nonsense in today's debate. So Paul, we believe that the criteria for judging today's debate should be between the government and the NGOs, which body can solve the main root of gender inequality. And through my speech, I brought up I brought up four major criteria. That's what gap, unequal pay, income distribution, and domestic violence. Violence. But we believe that we either told you that the major ways you can solve this problem is actually by implementing enforcing policies and actually punishing its offenders. But we told you that these are the major things we should consider in today's argument. So Paul, we took this as the major sense of this semicolon. But Paul, said official failed to show us one how NGO will cover the gender gap in what cover the gender gap in world gap. Second, failed to show us how NGOs will cover the problem in unequal pay. Third, failed to show us how NGOs will cover the problem in equal income distribution. Fourth, failed to show us how the NGOs can implement and enforce policies that will actually change the problem of gender inequality. So Paul, we ask, so Paul, this is based something that is actually stupid and foolishness and actually donating money to the NGOs that can bring out policies and implement policies that will truly actually affect the problem of gender inequality. To my first speaker, we told you that we and I did not mind that fighting the fight against gender equality goes beyond building school structures and the rest of them. It actually involves policies that will change the rights of these people. Self provision today's argument failed to give an answer in today's Fail to give an answer. So, Paula, what did we bring that one? We brought to you the dynamics of gender inequality. We told you these are the problems that facing gender inequality and how it will be solved. Second, Paula, we brought to you that the nature of the government has actually placed it in the position to actually implement and enforce policies, which are the main criteria in today's argument. Paula, they failed to show us how NGOs have that power in today's argument. So, that means first, they supported the argument of Tim Samichael. So, Paula, all I thought we're able to tell you, that, tell you that the government actually answers to emergencies. Actually, closing the main thing they were using against Samichael, that Samichael don't award, doesn't as acts quickly to majesties. But we were also able to tell you through our chief speaker how we refuted and reported every single of the major points in today's argument. The Every single of the major point in today's argument. When the brought up that the main stand should be that the government actually, the president of Nigeria actually said that his wife belongs to the kitchen. Two of several supporters, we are able to trash down that condition by telling you the world of a man shouldn't be, isn't the world of a mere of a 200 million Nigerians. So, Paula, what were we be able, what were we able to do in our world? In our world, we are able to show you the main problems that should be focused on in fighting gender inequality. In our world, we told you that our world is a better problem to solve these problems. In our world, we told you that this is what our world is doing, and if the fund is given to us, we'll do better. In now, what we told you that how actually these assuming people donating to us, how we incentivize them to donate more to solve the problem of gender inequality. So, with this, we think side proposition believes that yes, this motion should stand and truly, truly, we're proud of proposing it. Thank you. A quote by Robert Helen. He won't see it, and I quote You can sweat a thousand men by appealing to your conscience. Why are you convincing one man with logic? With this, that was the speaker, that was um, the play speech coming from the side proposition. And I'm going to thank you much for the use of time they used for their reply speech. Oh, shit. The reply speech coming from side proposition took 4 minutes 29 seconds. Finally, the hotness has stopped. Thank you. <laughs> I would like to bow the words of Adolf Hitler. He once said, and I quote, to maintain my integrity, I will call my first and second battalion to shoot me. But I am beyond human our to destructions. I have studied battle to the infinite, but failed to discover the position of the soul in human body. If any god there is, they know that I am the second god. But if you govern the world and come back and there is no god, they know that I am the second god. For I speak in terms of evading Poland, since British government have failed to submit my banners. They're known for crying, mourning, weeping, lamenting, 
But I am bombarding Poland tomorrow. Three days after the instant distortion, war saw, saw war, and war no more. But what can, can, can? Can, cannot can, what can, can, can? And what see shall saw? See, shall not see, what see shall saw? And once again, I'd like to borrow the words of Ban Ki moon. He said, and I quote, Achieving gender equality requires the engagement of women and men, girls and boys. It is everyone's responsibility. With this, we have come to the end of today's debate. Thank you.